In this video, uh, I want to show you how to record a macro in Microsoft Excel that's going to contain a formula. Uh, so a number of people have asked me how to do this. Uh, so let's start a macro. Now, I want to make a VLOOKUP in this uh, formula that will take the number score and look it up against this table and get the letter grade. So uh, by the way, uh, just as a point of reference, see this table over here? I, I named it a grade list. You can see when I pick on grade list, it, it, um, it go ahead, goes ahead and highlights that information over there. So I have another video that shows you how to name a range, but that, that is a named range for this example. Uh, so let's start a new macro. So I'll do view and then macros and then record macro. And I'll call this one um, lookup grade and we'll give it control G. When you make it a macro, it doesn't like spaces in the uh, macro name. If you wanted a separator, you can use an underscore instead. But in this case, uh, for the shortcut key, we'll do control G. We're gonna start in this workbook. So uh, now we're recording the macro. You can tell because I have the square over here in the corner. Uh, so I'm gonna click on the cell where I want the first VLOOKUP and I'll just start typing it in. Open parentheses column B, comma. Now I'm going to use that grade list, which is the table over here, another comma. And then uh, in this case, I want the second column to be returned. So I'll type the number two there and I'll close my parentheses. And I just typed in the formula. I'm going to go back to that cell and then do my speed fill. So it copies it all the way down. Now, um, sometimes when uh, sometimes when you do that, it doesn't work properly. So in this case, I'm going to stop recording the macro. And let's say I want to test the macro out. So I'm going to empty those cells. And I'll do a control G. And in that case, it worked. But sometimes when you try to do a formula, sometimes it doesn't work. So let me show you a, a different way to do a formula in a macro, just in case the first way doesn't work. Uh, let me delete those again. And I'm actually going to delete the macro so I can redo it again in a different way view macros, and I'll just say, there's the one I just made, I'll, I'll delete that. Delete that. Uh, here's the other way I might try to do the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and record a new macro. And I'll call this one, um, look up grade again. Control G. Since I delete the other one, I can use Control G again. I'll do Control G and click on OK. Now, what I have is on a different sheet, I have the formula. So I'm going to click on that cell, and I'm just going to copy it. I'll go back to the first sheet and do a paste, and then I'm going to copy that down. So the alter uh, let me stop recording the macro, and let's see if this works. I'm going to delete those cells so I can redo it again. So I'll do Control-G again. And you can see that time it actually did a copy and paste from the other sheet. So uh, when you're doing a formula in a macro, you can just try to type it in and see if the macro works that way. And if it doesn't, maybe uh, before you do the macro, go to a different sheet, set up the formula, and during the macro you're going to copy and paste the formula from the one sheet onto where you actually want that to appear. And uh, that's how you can actually include a mathematical formula in a macro in the Microsoft Excel 2010, 2007, or 2013.